everybody. My name is Joanne Shango and I'm the head of school at the Montessori School Rochester here in Rochester Hills, Michigan. I'm glad that you're here with me today and I hope that you find this live episode as valuable as I do. Today, uh, actually it was last night I think, possibly this morning, <clears throat> time is running together just a little bit. I was looking through Facebook and with uh, others I founded an organization called the Global Montessori Network and it truly is global. We have over 2,500 members from all over the world from right here in Michigan to Australia and Asia, Europe, South America, Africa. It has been really truly extraordinary to see the reach of so many guides and administrators of Montessori schools come together. And as much as we have shared with our distance learning platform with so many of these amazing guides, we have also learned so much and have grown in the short time we've had to adapt and implement a distance learning program to stay connected with our students. It has truly been extraordinary and the information collected, the bonds being formed, and the uh, connection with Montessori guides who are so different and fundamentally the same across the world is extraordinary. Well, this morning on the Global Montessori Network Facebook uh, group page, somebody had posted about children and connecting with them and guiding empathy or gu guiding uh, social conscience. And that, ha that got me thinking, and I thought, okay, I'd like to maybe go somewhere with this. And she was looking for ideas. She wanted to connect with her children. Uh, Montessori, one of the goals in a Montessori education is uh, offering opportunities for our children to grow and thrive so that as they grow up to their full potential, they can make an amazing impact uh, on our world to make it an even better place when they grow up. And so this question was really important and very relevant, I think, to Montessorians all around the world. I think to teachers, passionate teachers all around the world, regardless of what methodology they're teaching in, how do we uh, provide this opportunity for children to create and work within a social conscience right now while we're at home in this crisis? And so my brain was going. And then I started driving. I came up to our very empty school building so that I can meet with all of you and as I was driving I saw a mother on the road uh, off the side of the road and she was with her three children and they were doing something in the woods but it looked very purposeful and it looked very joyful and that had me thinking even more as I continued to drive, something extraordinary, I came across something extraordinary. There was construction on the road, and we haven't seen construction here in Michigan for the past two months, which in and of itself is an extraordinary thing, and believe it or not, I felt joyful seeing construction <laughs> because I hadn't realized it was missed, and uh, just that little semblance of a return to some sort of normalcy uh, brought me just a little bit of joy, and I was actually smiling while I waited to get through the intersection. But what I actually saw that brought me the most joy in that moment was the construction workers, while keeping safe distance and going about their work, were all smiling. And I don't know that I've ever paid that close of attention when I drive by construction workers and they have their stop sign. As I progress through that stop sign uh, when they tell me it's safe, I always smile and wave and periodically I get a smile or a wave back. But I wouldn't say I've noticed in detail the how the workers are feeling while they're hard at work. Today I did. I was looking closely at their faces and they were all smiling. And there was something I think really magical 
for them about getting back to some kind of work while staying socially conscious and careful with the distance they were providing. Some had masks on, some didn't have masks on, but they were all very far apart from each other and doing their work in a safe manner. But there was joy in their work, and I thought that's a really beautiful thing. And then I continued to drive, and I saw a woman that needed directions while she was on her bike. And another woman stopped while she was jogging, and they actually conversed with each other, again, with the appropriate amount of distance between them. But they were stopping and they were talking again, and that brought me joy. And that's how today's topic came about. I thought, how do we find joy in the little things now and always? It's always our focus in Montessori schools. Uh, Learning is a joyful experience, it's a discovery. It is something you get to do, not something you have to do. And it's meant to be joyful. Uh, If it's not joyful in the discovery, then the work didn't have the value it needed to have. And for a Montessori guide, we need to reassess that. How do we bring joy into the discoveries? How do we make connections to academic work so that it is meaningful beyond the paper and pencil? How do we connect it to real life so that the children understand and have a thirst for the knowledge so that it can be applied? It's that idea of applied learning. It's why in our school we do a lot with project-based learning because it's all applied. Uh, Learning about today, I gave a one-on-one Zoom lesson with a young gentleman And it was all about uh, congruent, similar, and equivalent shapes. And it's really cool. It's got great Montessori materials, and he was not engaged in it. And so we applied, I applied today with him some of our project-based learning concepts at Applied Learning and discussed the shapes, let him know why they were really important, connected it to some of the apps or games that he might play, uh, architecture that he might see, and then sent him on a mission around his house to measure doors doorways and windows to apply the work to apply this knowledge and understand why it's useful and important to have and he was much more engaged and hopefully there will be <clears throat> joy in his discovery and that joy doesn't mean like ta da 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 I love doing this it's not that it's the intensity and the interest of seeking out the answers and then the joy of finding knowledge and oftentimes in the Montessori classroom the child is so intense they do not know she doesn't notice anyone around her she's busy and she's working and it's intense and there's not a smile on her face I mean there she's busy she's concentrating and she's thinking and then true joy happens when she gets to the solution and she'll sit up and she'll like and then she'll look to her friends and want to explain it to everyone and that's the joy that I'm talking about and so I'm looking at that and that value in a Montessori classroom that value and importance in bringing joyful learning to children every day and I think how can we do that right now as parents as children as guardians or grandparents, as teachers or guides. How do we do this? How do we find joy right now in the everyday? And with the restrictions that we've had, with the health concerns that have been weighing on so many of our minds, uh, sometimes it's hard to experience or find that joy. So today I'm going to be challenging everybody to find joy the way all of the people that I was seeing as I drove to work uh, here to join you today were experiencing. And that moment of conscience, consciousness for myself as I was driving was a measure of me finding joy rather than fixating on my thoughts 
uh, of what I was going to do. Instead, I was connected to the world and I was seeking that joy. And when you place that into your mindset of seeking joy, then you're more readily able to find joy because sometimes it's right there in front of you and we don't see it. So with your children, how do we promote that social conscience? How do we build that empathy while finding joy? And that's the challenge. And it's going to look different for each and every one of you. It might be the idea of if we go back to the history of childhood, I think for 100 years or more, children have been creating lemonade stands. And when we think about the lemonade stands that children create, they are... Ultimately, the indirect aim is giving joy or at least a tasty lemonade to anybody that's walking by. But why are they actually building that lemonade stand? They wanted to. They wanted the experience of making the lemonade, of having the experience. They were working it out. The idea of building that small business, being creative and making the stand, being creative in squeezing the juice, uh, being mathematical in trying to figure out the cost and of the lemonade to sell, how much it cost us to build all of the, uh, or to collect all of the ingredients for the lemonade stand, but all of it was actually selfishly motivated. And as parents, we coach to them their impact on the world because their job as young children all the way through adolescence is to figure out how does the world work and how do they work in the world? And that's what they're always doing. Our job as parents, as guardians, as adults, as teachers and guides is to guide them to that connection of others while they satisfy the need to explore for themselves. And so we're always coaching that. We're always coaching them within our children the awareness of their impact on other people, whether the impact is when they're screaming or if that impact is when they're joyful, if that impact is when they've baked. Uh, When they bake, they're baking for themselves. When somebody else eats their food, they are wanting for themselves to know, did you like what I made? Uh, Because it's, it's about them. And then through coaching, again, we are connecting them to the impact. Oh, do you see the smiles on all of your face, face, all of your friends' faces? They are so happy. They're enjoying this wonderful food. You did something that made them happy. That's a coaching that we're offering to the children in all of their experiences, even in the joy that they can impart to others, which will only satisfy and give them more joy at the end of the day. So we want to look at the experiences over the next few days, weeks, and through life, really, of how do we coach the experiences they have into an understanding or an awareness of their impact on the world. It could be something like, how do we help our healthcare providers uh, to maintain their joy, their determination, and their hope for the future? with something that I can do. What is something I love to do that I'm really good at doing that I can do to make someone else smile? That's the coaching on our end. We could simply say, you love to build. Would you like to make birdhouses? Would you like to use the hammer and make birdhouses? And that will engage your child. That will keep them busy. They will enjoy the work of the hammer and the nails and putting together that simple birdhouse and then painting it. It will. When we coach bringing joy out, not just joy for themselves and the experience, which is their primary goal, is the experience of actually doing that building, but to coach into them, what would we do with these birdhouses? Where would we put them? Who do you think these birdhouses would make the most happy? Now a young child will say the birds, right? Or they will say outside of my window. And we coach beyond that. And we say, ooh, outside of your window. Why would you want the birdhouse outside of your window? because then I would see the birds coming and I would get to see all of the different birds and when the birds are dancing and trying to eat from that birdhouse, it makes me smile and laugh. 
Hmm. Do you think anybody else, who do you know that would love to have a birdhouse outside of their window as well, right? And they might say, oh, my grandma. I'll say, your grandma does love birds and you're going to continue coaching. Who else do you think? Maybe grandma's friends? Do you think grandma's friends? Or do you think grandpa's friends? And they're going to start thinking more. Oh, how about our neighbor? I say, oh, that's a great idea. Did you know that there are homes that are filled with older people that live inside of them? I wonder what would happen if we took some birdhouses there. And I'm coaching. I'm only saying I wonder. I'm not saying this is where we will take them because that becomes a decision that is about me and they're still fixated on their task and doing what mom would like them to do. But I am coaching them towards it. So I'm engaging them in an activity that in and of itself is going to give them joy. The work of and the challenge of building that birdhouse and painting that birdhouse working with me, having that one-on-one -on -one time with uh, their dad or their siblings, whoever it is in the home that they might be working on. And now I'm helping them think of how they would spread the joy. And then we might go and deliver them. So now they have been coached to come to an idea of remember that senior citizens home or that senior center uh, around the corner. Do you think that's a good idea? Shall we go and take a walk around it? Okay, let's go take a look and see. Oh, you do think it's a good idea. I think so too. I think you've come up with a great idea. And that conversation back and forth is really about building that social conscience, that awareness, that what they do that satisfies their own need, that they find confidence in and pride in, that they're really, really good at, that they can then share and appreciate that they're bringing joy to the world and appreciate the impact that that joy to the world uh, has on so many others and how it changes for themselves, the project that they were doing, as well as for others. And they find joy in that ad additional experience. And that's how we would build that social conscience for them. This weekend, you I don't know how it is where you are. In Michigan, we have a beautiful day. It is sunshiny, it is mild, it's not too cold, it's not hot, it's just really perfect weather. It's the weather that makes me think, I love spring, even though yesterday it was raining. Uh, and I do love spring. Yesterday, the buds on my tulips were still closed, and today, all of my tulips were opened. And I took beautiful photos of them. Maybe I'll upload a few of them onto the page just to share the signs of spring with us. But again, I took the time to notice, and that's another way to bring joy to our children, not only experiencing that beauty, but then looking and thinking with them this weekend, how can they make our earth more beautiful? What can they do with the flower beds or in the woods or on the lawn that can beautify our earth and bring joy. Uh, that hard work is joyful in its effort. It's hard, but they love it. I have, don't think I've ever met a child that doesn't really truly enjoy digging in the dirt, whether they feel they need to have gloves on or if they want the dirt under their fingers. When they find a comfortable way to be able to work in that dirt, they absolutely love it. Every child wants to do that. So giving them presentations on that kind of the earth's work and feeling joyful and cleaning a garden bed and then planting could be a great experience for joy and beautifying the earth. But again, when you think of how do we build that social conscience for them, we can look around, we can go for a walk and we're bringing joy just in our connection, having that one-on-one -on -one time with our children. But then looking around and seeing, is there any of our favorite neighbors who maybe can't beautify their own gardens this weekend? How can we help them? And then there's some great work that will keep your children busy and I think will just bring a smile to each of your faces, bringing joy to your hearts as well in in the work that they do, but having them draw out the garden. Let's draw that neighbor's home. Let's see where their gardens are. How many flowers do you think we can build there? And then bringing joy by finding those flowers and maybe going and 
planting a surprise garden in a neighbor's bed in a small area. And for these younger children, it might be as simple as planting five flowers that may or may not go noticed, but it will bring them joy to know that they beautified somebody else's space. And that's really and truly bringing that social conscience and awareness to the child. And it is truly having a very important social and emotional impact on our neighbors, on our community members, because we're all stressed. It's real. We are all stressed. We are stressed about different things. There are some that are stressed about the virus and some that are stressed about their work situation and some that are stressed about their children's feelings or their children's academic progress. There's so many worries right now that are going on and we all need to experience those joys and to be able to make an impact on our everyday neighbor is very important in helping all of us get through this and it gives so much beautiful work for the young child and also for the adolescent what happens to that adolescent when he or she makes a list of neighbors who usually mow their own lawn and maybe right now aren't because they're worried about stepping outside uh, they might be elderly they might have arthritis they might just be really busy working from home right now or raising their children what happens when he composes a letter and a request that says I'm here and I I would like to cut your lawn this weekend and uh, if you would like me to please check the box and put it back in the mailbox I'll be checking the mailbox on Saturday morning and if you would like me to I'm happy to help that builds such an awareness of responsibility and compassion in the adolescent of doing real big work for a neighbor as it does for the young child in cultivating a small corner of a very large garden bed or building uh, building the birdhouses or a variety of different things that can be passed on to share joy and really and truly make a social impact right now uh, during a time that we all really need it. I really recommend that all of you seek deep down inside of yourselves into your own creativity, into the skill sets that you have and the skill sets that your children have or a new skill set that you think you'd like to introduce them to so that they can find joy in the work and also find joy in the social connections or the social impact that they would be making on their neighbors and their community members at large. That's, that's it for today. Today is just about joy. Uh, I plan on doing it. I know that uh, my children plan on doing it. My son, I talked to you, uh, I think it was yesterday, about how he was feeling angry and he didn't know he didn't know why he was angry. And so we really discussed the anger and we couldn't get to the root of it. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know what he's angry about. It's, it's all of it, there isn't one point, but it's this whole situation. Uh, he interpreted as being angry with himself because he had lashed out at his brother. Now, what he did couldn't have been a big deal because his very emotional young brother <laughs> didn't have much to say about it. He's like, yeah, we got into a fight. It couldn't have been that big of a deal, but my older son was really, really angry at himself. And so I hugged him and we held on really, really tight. And yesterday, all of the children were laughing and playing together, joking around, horsing around. There wasn't an argument to be had in in our household they were so joyful and today my son the one that had been angry that the anger had been festering and building up the frustrations the fears everything had been building up and it interpreted himself into himself as anger and he was so mad at himself for the way he had reacted to his brother and he didn't have school today, so I didn't wake him up this morning. I thought, I'll just let him sleep. And he slept until 1.30 and woke up so joyful. I mean, if emoticons, is that what they're called? Those little oh, emojis? Uh, 
if those could whistle, all of his emojis were whistling. And he was like, I slept, I feel really good, I'm caught up with school, I wanna do something, mom, what can I do today? And I thought, oh, just walking around with a smile on your face is going to be impactful for everybody that you come across from near or far. But he woke up feeling joyful and wanting to impart that joy. And I'm really asking all of you to reach down inside of yourselves and coach your children through a project into a social awareness of how they could have an impact to bring joy to others as well. And I think you'll find that your whole household, your children and yourselves will be more joyful as the weekend progresses. I thank you all. It's going to be a short one today. I thank you all for being here. Stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy. Get outside, make an impact on yourselves, on your children, and on the world, and focus on joy. Look for joy. It's out there, and we need that focus more than ever right now. Bye, everybody. Bye.